My question for you today is, how good do you have to be to go to heaven? You know, you've always heard that old saying, good people go to heaven and bad people go to hell. Well, that's true to a point. But how good do you have to be to go to heaven? You know, you're not going to find anybody who considers herself bad. I mean, nobody wants to point out their own faults. In fact, in the book of Proverbs, it says, Most men will proclaim each his own goodness, but who can find a faithful man? You know, it's not uncommon for us to walk around and kind of blow our own horn and say how good we've done things and how good we've been to other people. But is that enough to get you to heaven? But sometimes in a courtroom, when people have been charged with a crime and they've done something wrong, well, they stand before the judge. And a lot of times, either on their own behalf or an attorney on their behalf will point out the good things they've done, whether they were nice and polite when they were called or good things they have done already like community service and they're not really a bad person. A lot of times we call these things mitigating factors. These are the things that kind of try to offset the scales a little bit for the bad things they've done. You know, I've always tried to do my best. I've never really hurt anybody, but is that enough? Would it scare you if I told you to go to heaven, you had to be perfect? Would that be enough to shake you up a little bit? In Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, we read these words. Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. So how do we become perfect? Well, we're not perfect. And we can't do enough of good deeds to make us perfect. Did you know in Isaiah chapter 64, it says... But we are like an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are like filthy rags. Which means everything we do to put on righteousness, it's like we're still wearing filthy rags. But there is a good side. Because we don't have to make it on our own merits. Somebody's already paid a price for us. We just have to put on their righteousness or have them stand in our place. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, I'm going to read this to you. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption, that as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. You know, we've committed a crime. We're going to stand before the judge. We don't need any mitigating factors. We just need someone to stand up and pay the fine for us. And Jesus has already done that. And because he paid that fine, there's no need to find us guilty. We're set free already.